What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and tonight I have some exciting news in regards to Season 1 for Black Ops 6. We're going to be talking about the rumored weaponry and some additional updates that Treyarch just released. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and as a big reminder, there's plenty of brand new articles going up on Detonated.com for those who want to stay up to date with all things campaign, multiplayer, and of course, zombies. In around 24 hours from now, we're going to be launching the Codex, another brand new tool for the website as a way to give back to the community and specifically specifically the zombies community this time around. Do not miss out on the announcement tomorrow. It's going to blow your minds. But with that as well, we're also going to be adding new Black Ops 6 bundles to the stockpile once packs start getting added in the coming weeks. And we'll, of course, have all Wars 1 1 bundles added very, very soon. But we're just a couple of days away from the reveal of Season 1, which to me is fairly shocking, right? We just got the launch of the game about a week ago, and already we're going to be getting a blog post and even a roadmap for the first season of DLC. But as of today, we got the release of Nuketown 24-7. Thank you all for the immense support on my long stream we did earlier today got plenty of crazy gameplays 100 plus kills as you're seeing in the background here of this commentary and we ended up getting a nuke to end off the stream as well on top of double xp across all game modes we also have double gobblegum earn rates within zombies right now i've heard some whispers that apparently that isn't working correctly but regardless of that i'm sure that'll be fixed in the coming hours and they'll end up extending the double earn rate weekend if Treyarch has to if people out there are still having issues after today but as of now over in nuke town Obviously, you have plenty of game modes you can grind through through just this map alone. There's going to be Team Deathmatch, Kill Confirmed, Domination, Hardpoint, and even Kill Order. Now, I actually haven't seen Kill Order pop up when we were going ahead and voting for which mode we wanted to play. Maybe it's actually not in the playlist or it's just incredibly rare since folks out there aren't a fan of the map right now. A couple of days ago when we were streaming the launch of Infected, Matt Scrantz himself, a lead developer over at Treyarch, did come in my stream to announce that, yeah, Infected is also going to be added to Nuketown at some point. Not sure when that's going to be. As of now, it doesn't seem to pop up inside of the map options when you go to the infected information so maybe that'll be added in the coming days another weird thing about nuketown today is that unfortunately we don't have access to the map within private matches so it's a bit hard to go ahead and hunt what could be another mannequin easter egg i know i've covered plenty of those throughout the years so we've tried it in pubs and weren't really lucky with shooting off all the heads and arms while dealing with real enemies also going at us it was a challenge, but once private match support is added, I'll make a follow-up video talking more about that Easter egg. And theater mode also doesn't record your gameplays while you're playing Nuketown, which is really strange. So I wasn't able to go in and just kind of fly around the map. I'm aware you can go ahead and load into Warhead, go to theater mode, and then fly out of the map to find Nuketown. But the map really isn't rendered in properly, so there's probably plenty of things to miss if you do try that method. Now, this wasn't mentioned in today's patch notes, but it does look like any bugs related to camel grinding did end up getting resolved. I think the challenges themselves weren't tracking properly or were tracking more kills than you actually had gotten. I think something to do with double kills and the triples. Not sure what's going on with camel grinding, but I'm sure they'll end up amending the patch notes to detail more information about what they exactly fixed. And I'm sure other issues will probably be found in the coming days since, again, the game just came out. But camel grinding is back to normal. I was sweating my butt off with the AS Val today. Managed to get all my military camels completed. I'm now working on my specials to go ahead and work towards the mastery. Now, don't forget, you can use code DYNAMITE to save 10% off any order over at Control Freak, including for the brand new Black Ops 6 Edition thumbsticks, which does actually come with an in-game charm. The code will be featured in the package, and you'll also get a collector's coin for every purchase made through the Control Freak website. But I also recently partnered with Steel Series, who just came out with the Mr. Peaks Booster Pack, featuring some new headset add-ons, a Monkey Bomb mouse pad, and even more. You can also use code DYNAMITE to save upwards of 12% off any order over on the website. Now, I know it could be frustrating when glitches that make camel grinding easier end up getting passed. We see this every single year, but like I always say as well, if you're not really a fan of the camel grinding right now because you're frustrated with certain weapons, wait for DLC weapons to get added in so you can skip some of the ones you don't like from launch, or wait until some challenges potentially get nerfed down to become a little bit easier during the post-launch season. But as a part of the November 1st patch notes, as you guys can see, they mentioned stability. Address an issue where some players may encounter a black screen when loading into a public or private match for both MP and Zombies. They resolved an issue when trying to select DLSS or DLAA in the upscaling options and resolved an issue with the unlock noti for diamond mastery badges. They removed Lotan from the infected map pool because of an exploit, I believe. They added infected to private matches, which is good. That's a good start. They resolved an issue in free-for-all where scoring was based on total score rather than the number of elimination points. That's odd. And they resolved an issue in S&D where players could slide too far while diffusing. 
They fix an issue with the slug attachment on shotguns, dealing incorrect damage, and an issue where challenges requiring dive kills are not awarded properly. They've also resolved an issue with stability when using the UAV, an issue with infected stability while earning medals, and an issue with stability when using the vigilance perk. But for zombies, they've actually made high rounds a little bit harder, as we're going to get to in a second. They closed an exploit that allowed players to reactivate time gobblegums. Not sure how somebody already found that, but special and elites killed by score streaks will no longer drop items. And they also closed an exploit that allowed players to block zombie pathing with tactical raft. That was a massive exploit over on Terminus, of course. And then for Liberty, they resolved an issue that prevented score streaks from being used after completing the main quest and an issue that will leave the player in spectator mode when dying after completing the main quest. Stability, we got some fixes there for fuel upgrades, server side stability, and then adjusted round UI limit to 999 from 256. So that's actually something that took many, many months to get added into, I believe it was Cold War, since there was also a round limit when you played that game. But those are the patch notes for today to end out the first week of Black Ops 6's life cycle. Now, a couple of days ago, I made a video talking about season one, everything we knew so far, essentially just the official information that's known because quite literally, Really nothing has leaked for Black Ops 6, which to me has been a breath of fresh air. I hope we can see that trend throughout the entirety of the game cycle where we don't have complete seasons leaked prior to them being revealed. We're again just days away from the reveal of season one. And this is a pretty minimal leak that's out there, which may or may not even be true. But according to Vondi is Pog and other data miners like forward leaks on Twitter, these are the rumored weapons for Black Ops 6 season one. These of course could be weapons we end up seeing in later seasons or maybe not even in season one. But as we see, the M72 Law, a launcher that we had back in, what, Black Ops 1? Not really a fan of when launchers get added into the game, but hey, so be it. Maybe they'll get it out the way now, and then throughout the other seasons of Black Ops 6, they'll end up just focusing on other ranged weaponry or other special items that don't include launchers. But again, it's always cool when you see a launcher every now and again, I suppose. Apart from that, though, an absolute classic, we then have the FAL. This is a weapon that's been in several Black Ops games, including Black Ops 1 and 2. It's been in quite a few costs, to be honest with you. It's actually a battle rifle so we're gonna have to wait and see how they implement it here inside of black ops 6 because sometimes as we see with certain classic weaponry they end up changing what class it's a part of or they change the name of it or kind of how it's handled we'll see though right it's unclear if they're gonna keep the traditional names of all of these weapons going forward if they have the licensing to do that but the fal was always a blast to run in both multiplayer and even zombies we then have the sar80 this is an assault rifle that i don't believe we've seen in another call of duty before but if i'm forgetting a cod or something please feel free to let me know down below in the comments maybe it has been in a cod previously and i'm just not thinking of it right now but as we saw with the launch of black ops 6 several new weapons they added in at launch of course were completely original and weren't ever seen in another call of duty before so i think it'll be cool to keep up that trend throughout the life cycle of getting other original weapons that weren't in another black ops game and also weren't in another modern warfare title but we also have a fan favorite pistol the 5.7 this is definitely a pistol we had in bo2 and it's been in other games over the years it was always a blast to pack a punch in zombies but right now we have some pretty good pistols inside of black ops 6 not really complaining about them i know i have seen questions asking about the 1911 an absolute classic from bo1 I'm sure they're probably saving that for a future season or something. Again, this also isn't the final list of Season 1 weapons, but just the rumored ones as of right now. Overall, though, I think it's a pretty good start, at least, especially when you're talking about the FAL and the SAR. I'm always looking for a new AR or SMG, so even if we don't get a new submachine gun in Season 1, I'm sure one could be added as a surprise during maybe Reloaded or even as soon as Season 2, which is probably like early February or something. But these right now are the only leaked weapons for Black Ops 6. I'm assuming there could also be some other weapons that... You guys may have seen in campaign or in other aspects of the game that could also potentially be added into multiplayer and zombies. Now, something I also wanted to mention is the Raygun Mark II. According to Fumu Leaks over on Twitter, this person's leaked quite a bit of info in the past. This is a classic wonder weapon that we didn't see in Cold War. It was in both Black Ops 3 and 4 after its original debut from BO2's Buried. I think that was the Vengeance map pack. This is a monster of a wonder weapon, an absolute fan favorite, and I cannot wait to see how it gets implemented in future seasons. Will it be exclusive? to just one map or will it be a case where it gets added into the mystery box of all maps because that's kind of the way it was added back in the day right anytime you saw the ray gun mark ii in a certain black ops you can find it in the box in any zombie map that you played as you could also find the regular ray gun mark one in any zombie map that you played now something i've thought of is that we weren't
weren't able to triple pack a punch the mark two in any other zombies iteration so i'd be curious to see how this weapon could actually look when you triple pack it inside of black ops 6 that would be awesome because right now you can of course triple pack both the jet gun and the beam smasher in black ops 6 it's also unknown if this is actually for season one could this be the wonder weapon we get in the first dlc map which comes out at some point in december with season one reloaded or is it going to be added at some point after now as of now it's a big question mark as to how we're going to be unlocking weapons in the black ops 6 post launch will it be different from modern warfare that is the question right because in modern warfare we saw a case where weapons were typically added through battle passes and then weapons could be slipped in through the week five challenge as a part of the weekly challenges or through the classified sector during a reloaded update when you'd have to do like five challenges to get whatever the ranged weapon was that was the way weapons got added in that game there wasn't really any other way that we saw weapons added but for black ops 6 you can bet we're obviously getting the return of battle passes we already know we're getting a black cell bundle as a part of the vault edition which covers you with some tier skips for season one so i'm expecting maybe two or three weapons in the season one battle pass but if whether or not we're getting classified sectors is currently unknown Treyarch has previously teased through the cod pod that they're going to be introducing a new system entirely in this game for the pulse launch cycle to i believe replace the weekly challenge system that we had in modern warfare 3 we're not going to be seeing weekly challenges or maybe even aftermarket parts but i think a system to replace all of that so that they can also maybe add dlc weapons in that way i know at the end of cold war cycle for season six the haunting we ended up unlocking the lapa smg through completing a challenge event so maybe they'll end up incorporating more dlc weapons through big challenge events inside of black ops 6's post launch or they could also just add weapons in with simple unlock challenges like we saw back in the day for some of the warzone one era cods a lot of things to think about with exactly how weapons could be added into the game now i'd also be curious to see if operator mods are going to make their way back into black ops 6 we know about the xmg's crossbar attachment that we actually noticed back during the multiplayer beta if there's any other operator mods in the game right now that i'm just missing let me know down below in the comments i believe there might be one or two more but i love the fact that they're kind of just discreet and just hidden within the gunsmith allowing the community to kind of just discover that for ourselves it'll be great to see with dlc weapons that get added if there are any special attachments that can either be brought to other weapons too or just exclusive ones that really help a weapon stand out inside of the game i think it's also funny how with the prestige system we have like a hidden vmp and a hidden stg and i know they're just blueprints but it's cool that it could transform some of the weapons we already have in the game into classic looking weapons even if it's not the exact weapon in its original form but a blueprint that gives it attachments or a look like that classic weapon maybe we'll end up seeing more of that as well throughout future bundles and future seasons but that is about it this has been dk dynamite leave our thoughts down below in the comment section what are your thoughts on the season one update here for black ops 6 how are you feeling about the rumored weaponry the return of nuketown and the brand new pass notes that we got I really hope you enjoyed and peace out everybody